Hi everybody. Now this is what we're going to call the appendix to lecture two. So in lecture two, we created a model. We developed a model of the labor market where we had employed people, unemployed people, and people were moving from employed to unemployed by becoming separated from their job, and they were moving from unemployed to being employed by finding a job. Okay, and we, we said we had some variables in there. We said we had the finding rate, that's the percentage of unemployed who find a job. We have a separation rate, that's the percentage of employed each month who lose their job. We have, um, ultimately you'll have an unemployment rate. There was a labor force, okay, we said that was fixed. There's total number employed, total number unemployed. So what I've done here is I've created an Excel spreadsheet that essentially simulates that model. So we're don't worry about these graphs yet. I'll show you those in just a second. But when we put in a finding rate and a separation rate and a unemployment uh, the finding rate, separation rate, an unemployment rate and a labor force. These are all variables that we can set essentially to begin with. All right? That's not the um, natural rate of unemployment, that's just the initial rate wherever we happen to start out at. Right now I have it set to be the natural rate of unemployment. This is what we call the steady state, right? Steady state unemployment rate or the steady state unemployment rate is the natural rate of unemployment. Um, labor force doesn't change, it's exogenously fixed and in the steady state we have 95,000 people are employed, 5,000 people are unemployed, there's no time to adjustment because we start in equilibrium. I could change this. I could change that to say 10 percent. Well, What happens then? If the finding rate falls to 10 percent, then the natural rate of unemployment climbs to 9.1 percent. And you can continue to, to play with that. What if you made it higher? So instead of go back to 19 percent, that makes it at 5. What happens if I make it, what would happen if I would make that instead of 19%, I make it say 30%. Then the natural rate of unemployment falls. Okay, that goes right along with what we said in the, in the chapter. So when this, what, this spreadsheet will be up on D2L. What I'd like you to do is just download it and then play with it. Um, so change the finding rate. Make it go up, make it go down, and see what happens to the natural rate of unemployment. We can then see also what happens to, un to employment and unemployment, right? Because that's a, a, just a, a, a function of the whole model, right? Okay, so what happens if we change the separation rate? So let me take this back to 19%. This will get us our baseline of 5%. What happens if I increase the separation rate? Well, we said... Um, that it should make the uh, natural rate of unemployment go up. Well, okay, so let's make it 5% instead of 1%, and then all of a sudden, look at that. Our natural rate of unemployment jumps to 20.8%. And we can play with that um, as you see fit. Let's go back to our original numerical example of 1% and 19%, giving us a natural rate of, of 5%. Now, this is everything is just kind of starting out in equilibrium. So these are what we call our initial conditions to the model. But another thing that's kind of fun to do is say, well, what happens if something changes midstream? So let's say the finding rate decides to change. We're going to have a shock to the finding rate. So it goes along, and the finding rate's at 19%, but then it jumps to, say, 25%. What's going to happen? Well, if we come over here to our steady state box, all right, this is the initial steady state. That's the steady state based on these initial conditions here. We go to the new steady state. That's the conditions based on all these ex conditions except the job finding rate's now 25%. Now, what did we expect to happen when the job finding rate went up? We expect the natural rate of unemployment to drop. Okay. Now, we come down here, we can see how each one of these variables responds. So the finding rate goes up, right? It was at 19 and now it's at 25. What's going to happen to employment? Well, employment was here steady at its, at its 95,000 level, 
right, when we were in these initial conditions, but then it changes. And all of a sudden it changes right here, and it actually changes at exactly period 10 because I made it do that. And, and we can see employment climbs. And so the response of employment is just as we would expect. It climbs. Why? Because people are finding jobs faster. Okay, what happens to unemployment? Unemployment falls, right? That makes sense because people are finding jobs faster, and so fewer people are going to be in the unemployment rates. And then what happens to the unemployment rate? The unemployment rate falls. Exactly. Now, the issue, this gray area that's in here, is the adjustment period. That's basically the time period between this initial change, in this case the finding rate changes, and reaching the new steady state. So we'll call that the adjustment period or the adjustment phase. And right here I've measured that. So the adjustment phase, in this case, it takes 19 months for the economy to adjust to the new steady state when we have a change in the finding rate. Okay, well, that's interesting. What would happen if, let's, let's just delete that for right now. What would happen if we're not going to change the steady state conditions? All of these conditions happen, but we have some cyclical unemployment. So we have a business cycle downturn, and that causes the unemployment rate to go up. So we're in a recession, so we have a high unemployment. Let's say it goes to 10%. Well, in this condition, what would happen? Well, first of all, notice there's no new steady state, right? Why? Because we didn't change the finding rate or the job separation rate. And that's what determines our steady state level of unemployment, our steady state unemployment rate. And then the unemployment rate plus the labor force determines employment and unemployment. Okay, so that doesn't change. So nothing's new there. But we do have this spike. So unemployment falls, or I'm sorry, employment falls, right? Unemployment spikes. And then we gradually see unemployment diminish. Employment increase, the unemployment rate come back down to the 5% long run steady state. And then we can kind of come here and see what's going on. Why is this happening? Well, job finding, total job finding increases. Why does it increase? Well, because there's more people initially in the unemployed house. And so there's more people to find a job. So 19% of 10,000 is a bigger number than 19% of 5,000. And so we see the job finding rate, or job finding, not the finding rate, but number of people who find a job spikes. And then, because that spikes, what happens? Employment starts to go up. Job separation declines. Why does job separation decline? Well, job separation declines because unemployment fell. And because there's fewer people employed, fewer people are going to be um, separated from their job because the, the separation rate is fixed. It's 1% in this case. And so we can finally go here and we can see, well, the number of people who find a job minus the number of people who are separated from their job equals our job creation. And so we have positive job creation. Why? Because the job separation number of people separated from their job is smaller than the number of people finding a job until we reach steady state again. And then the job creation comes back down to zero in steady state. Okay, and that's pretty much what we would expect to see as um, if we had a, a, a increase in unemployment. But I want you to notice something. How long did it take for the economy to recover? Well, we had this business cycle fluctuation. Nothing in the underlying model that changes our steady state level of unemployment or our natural rate of unemployment. But it still takes 31 months for the economy to recover from that shock. All right? It's sometimes the um, the um, labor market takes a very long time to recover from shocks as we can see from the latest um, recession that we had, which began 2007. We say ended in 2009, but the thing you have to remember is the end of a recession doesn't mean everything is better. All right, Actually, the end of the recession is the beginning of the recovery, which just means it's as bad as it's gotten. Right? The difference between the end of the recession 
right, the recovery and the recession is during the recession, things are bad and getting worse. At the end of the recession, things are bad and getting better, right? So at the end of the recession, things are as bad as they get. In any event, so we have, have this little spreadsheet that we can play with. There's a couple other things that are kind of interesting. What if instead of a change in the unemployment rate, we had a change in the labor force? Let's say the labor force increases by 5,000 people. So it goes from 100,000 to 105,000. Okay. Well, in that case, what's going to happen? Well, first of all, the way I've set this up, if the labor force increases, these guys don't immediately start out as employed. They actually start out as unemployed. Right? Think of it like this. You, are, you just graduated from college. You're now in the labor force, but you haven't found a job yet. All right, there's some, some search time for you to do that. Well, notice now, so unemployment has increased by 5,000 people temporarily. All right, notice there's no new steady state. Why is there no new steady state? Because steady state is determined by the finding rate and the job separation rate. So we don't have a new steady state unemployment, level of unemployment. We will have a new steady state level of employment and unemployment, but that'll just be 105,000 times 5% for unemployment and 105,000 times 95% for employment. The only difference is the, the labor force, the base. I should probably change that in the spreadsheet, but oh well. Notice again, it still takes almost three years for the economy to absorb that increase, that 5% increase in the labor force. And how does it happen? Well, first of all, we have a spike in unemployment and in unemployment which means the job finding spikes because there's more people looking for jobs think of it that way job separation job separation increases and it doesn't fall why because employment didn't change employment stayed the same at 95,000 so the number of people finding it to, or losing their job stays the same until job finding starts kicking in we're creating jobs which means more and more people are employed and as more and more people are employed if we have one percent of those people who are employed always losing their job every month then the job separation will be increasing but notice it doesn't increase as much as the job finding rate does and so job creation is positive all the way up until we hit here about 31 months later when we get back to our new steady state where we have approximately a thousand people losing their job and approximately a thousand people finding jobs unemployment rate right back at five percent with higher employment because it's 95 percent of 105,000 now and higher unemployment because it's a five percent of 105,000 rather than 100,000 so it'd be slightly higher okay so what I'd like you to do is, and this isn't an assignment because we, we had a big Excel assignment um, last week. I'm just going to kind of try to take it easy this week. Is just download the spreadsheet and play with it a bit. If you have questions about it, um, I'd like you to just go ahead and post those on the um, discussion board. Or if you need to talk one-on-one, -on -one, that's fine too.